Let's learn in this video how to use SCADA in Kubernetes in order to auto-scale our workloads based on external metrics. When we use HPA, Horizontal Pod Autoscaler, that will rely mainly on the memory and CPU utilization. But with SCADA, we can extend this, this feature to enable looking for metrics coming from outside of our cluster itself. So how that works? The architecture here will look like this one here, where we have the KEDA components, which are the metrics adapter, controller, and the scaler. Those will look for uh, uh, metrics coming from outside our cluster. Those will be uh, managed by the scaled object. And then it will manage the number of replica for our workloads, mainly for our deployments. So it can scale down to zero, and it can also go to N to whatever number we want to. So that completes the work of the horizontal pod autoscaler. Let's see now how that works. So KEDA is based on events. So it supports here multiple scalers available in this list right here. So it can look for number of messages inside a queue, whether that is an event hub or blob storage or a storage queue or service bus, like what we will see in the demo today. But it can also look for some other systems, third party um, providers right here, like Redis or uh, Azure Monitor and so on, or Log Analytics and many more. In the demo today, we'll see how we can scale our number of pods based on the number of messages inside, inside our queue. So to do that, here I have prepared the demo environment in this uh, GitHub repository, Docker Kubernetes course, where in the folder number 16, HPA KEDA, you will find all the uh, scripts that I'm using and along with the YAML files that I'll go to deploy to my uh, Kubernetes cluster bringing here my VS code where I have these files. So first I start here by uh, installing KEDA in my Kubernetes cluster. So I use Helm chart, which is one of the options to install KEDA. And it's just adding that repo and then installing it into a namespace called uh, KEDA. And then I wanna create a resource group and create um, a service bus because that's what I want to demo in this uh, uh, in this workshop. So I create the service bus and then I create a queue in my service bus and then I create an authorization rule allowing me to uh, or allowing the um, uh, the scaler to connect to that service bus and then I list the keys to be used inside the service bus. And then I have here the two files. So first one is the deployment object, which will go to deploy an Nginx pod right here. And the only thing that I have added to this deployment is this environment. So into here, I have this environment called a service bus connection string, which will have the uh, connection uh, string to connect to my service bus or to my queue exactly. So make sure here at the end, you have that reference to the entity path, which is your queue. Then I have the second object, which will go to configure the uh, KEDA from here. So I, that is called the scaled object. Um, and here I have the parameters or the configuration for that object. So it will go to use the scale target reference, um, which is the Nginx deployment. So it will uh, manage the number of uh, pods inside the Nginx deployment file. And then it will go to uh, use this configuration. So it will watch for the number of messages each five seconds and then once uh, when it needs to to cool down or it needs to scale down it will do that after 10 seconds after a delay of 10 seconds uh, for this um for this number of replica they should be between 0 and 10 0 which is the minimum and 10 which will be the maximum number of replica count for my deployment and then this will use the trigger which is a predefined right here which is azure service bus that's what i'm going to use and then in the metadata section i provide the connection information to that service bus or to that queue so first thing i provide here is the queue name and then the number of messages that should be inside that queue here actually it means is the number of messages per pod so each time i have five uh, messages into that queue it will it will create a new pod and then connection from environment so this is the way how this scalar object will connect to my queue so it will use a variable environment 
from my deployment, which is called service bus connection string. And remember, I have already defined that as an environment variable in my, uh, in my deployment. So it will get this value from here. Of course, this, is, uh, this value should be secured. So make sure you use a secret to store it. I have already, um, I have already uh, deployed uh, these two files. So I deployed that Nginx and the scaled object. And even in my deployment, I have three replica. So when deploying the scaled object, it will uh, set it up to zero because I don't have any message in my uh, service bus yet. So that number is zero. Let's go now to the Azure portal and let's go to add some other messages. So here I'm inside my service bus queue, where here, as you see, I don't have any messages yet. So I'll go to the shared or to the service bus explorer from here to add some messages using the Azure portal. So I'll go to choose content type, whatever that value is. Kada a value and I'll send this message and I'll go to run that deploy that dash watch. And here immediately you see now I have a new pod that is deployed in order to, um, to consume this message. Let's go now to, um, to simulate that I have more multiple uh, messages right here. So I'll go to add multiple messages, send. And as you see now here when I'm adding the, uh, the message number six, as you see here, when I'm adding the message number six, that will go to scale even more those number of pods. So it will go to create two pods because I wanna handle each five messages using one single pod. So the message number six will trigger the scaling to add one additional pod. Then after that, immediately when I add the message number 11 right here, that message number 11 will trigger the auto scaling again to go to create three pods and so on. And of course, then if I go to receive or to dequeue some of these messages, if I click on receive right here to remove a message uh, from that queue, that will go to trigger a scale down in a few seconds or actually exactly after 10 seconds because we have uh, configured that into the file scaled object. So that scale down will be done after a delay of 10 seconds. And yes, here we can see it's started to scaling down to two and then to one. If I try to get all the objects deployed by Kada and through the namespace Kada, we can see here two pods. One is the Kada operator and the second one is the operator matrix API server to get all the metrics from there. And then it did actually deploy a service and also some two deployments that will manage these two pods and the replica set that was generated automatically. So one two important things here with Kada, we can, um, we can create multiple scalers per deployment. So we can rely, for example, on number of messages and in the queue and then another scaler that will go to watch for any other metrics like number of HTTP requests, for example, but never um, the second note right here is that it's not a good idea to mix between uh, object scalers in Kada and the HPA. So either you use HPA or the object scaler in, uh, in Kada. It's not a good practice to use both because you will be running into issues in racing conditions. I hope you liked the video. Thank you.